there's been a lot of hype about agents in the past few months, uh, or at least back towards uh, April, May. And there will probably continue to be an increasing amount of interest in building agents, um, both uh, to prototype and also to productionize, um, especially as these models get better, costs come down. Lom Index supports a fundamental concept called data agents, which are LLM-powered knowledge workers. What a data agent it does is it is a kind of um, automated entity that can act upon a set of tools and basically reason about how to use these tools to achieve a goal at hand. And the key thing to think about here is that this is an uh, abstraction that basically can be applied as a layer on top of an existing RAG pipeline. So let's say a data agent has access to your knowledge base through a RAG pipeline as one tool, but also has access to an email client and also like a Slack client. So you can call the email client as a tool to read the latest emails, right? And just that, put that in its conversation memory. It could call the RAG pipeline to actually return relevant context to like ground these emails in some additional context. And then it can call a tool to actually not just do search retrieval, but actually modify state in the world. And here it can basically send an update through a Slack API. The way we think about data agents is the core components are threefold. One is this agent reasoning loop. This could be, for instance, uh, React, which is a popular like chain of thought tool use paradigm. It could be like a, a using OpenAI function calling, where you actually just do a while loop through the API to see whether or not the API wants to call any functions that you supply it. Of course, recent advancements, developments like the OpenAI Assistance API uh, have also abstracted away that part for you too. So you can basically call it with a user task and it'll be able to run under the hood to, to try to figure out how to uh, achieve that task for you. And then the second component of this is just the set of tools. You can plug in basically any tools that you want. A tool is basically an API interface. You can have an agent interact with the tool uh, by defining a set of parameters to call the tool with. So first, do tool collection. Two, figure out what parameters to call the tool with. Three is execute the tool and process the response. And we have, again, both the RAG pipeline tools as well as a variety of tools on Llama Hub that allow you to interact with different services. And the third is some sort of basic conversation memory to just store this state and this uh, set of interactions that you have. At a very basic level, you could just dump it all in the context window. And especially as these context windows get bigger, that very simple approach is actually relatively, is, is not bad. Why agents, maybe, taking a step back? And, and how, do, how like, what are the things that we can do here that can go beyond what we can do with RAG? One of the key advantages of agents, specifically in the RAG setting, is to handle these complex user tasks, um, especially the ones that are multi-part and require a dynamic lookup and retrieval from different parts of your knowledge corpus. Because with the agent reasoning loop, it can take in a user task and figure out one, how to decompose that question into sub-questions through stuff like chain of thought. Two, draw up some sort of plan, right? Some query plan to actually achieve the goal. And three, figure out the right set of tools to call. And the routing, honestly, was a very simple example of this. But if you have a lot of different documents, you want to, for instance, run comparisons between different documents, you want to summarize a subset of documents, or you want to do uh, question answering over any subset of documents. An agent can basically dynamically route this query to the relevant set of documents and do dynamic retrieval, right? Versus a top K with a top K rag pipeline, you're basically just fixed with whatever the context, uh, the, the top K most relevant context is. So you can't actually, sometimes uh, you don't actually have the context to actually answer some more complex user tests. A quick example highlighting this is just financial analysis with uh, agents and, and RAG. Um, and we, we've used this, of course, just like SEC documents and a few of these examples. But of course, you can generalize this to any data source, whether it's medicine, legal, um, whether it's uh, kind of product reviews, uh, consumer-based. Um, and so we've seen this used in a few different settings. But what the, uh, just very simple multi-part question is compare and contrast Uber and Lyft's revenue growth, right? This requires you to both look up Uber's revenue growth, Lyft's revenue growth. And the nice thing about having an agent is it can basically, through its reasoning loop, do that for you. Break down the question into sub-questions or subtasks over each set of tools. And if you model Uber and Lyft as separate RAG pipelines, it basically reason that it needs to use maybe the Uber pipeline first and then Lyft's pipeline and then combine the answers at the end. 